Hey there rock stars, your guitar sage here and today we're going to talk about something new. We're going to talk about playing and singing at the same time. So playing your guitar and singing at the same time. I've got a lot of students that will come to me and ask me about this and are hoping for me to, to impart some pearl of wisdom that's just going to help them when in reality it has to do with practice. But like I tell all my students, um, I feel like my job is to get them to a place that they could get themselves, but I could get them there a lot quicker. And, um, and sometimes there is information that once you have it, it brings you to a new place. So um, I guess what I'm saying is that you don't necessarily have to have a teacher to do well at your instrument, but you do have to be willing to learn. And a lot of times a teacher can get you there quicker. So let me talk about a few philosophies here, philosophies here a bit before we jump into this because it has everything to do with your state of mind and how good you're going to be at an instrument. Um, you might have heard me say before that um, becoming good at an instrument or anything, be it a magician or an acrobat or something like that, it's 1% talent and 99% work. For those people that don't agree with that, those are the people that probably aren't seemingly very good at something or they, um, they maybe are good at something but they don't remember what the process was for them getting good at something. I've seen it time and time again. I've taught hundreds of students over the years, um, thousands of lessons and I've always seen bar none, the people that get good at their instrument are not those that come in with a little extra talent. That was a little premature there. With a little extra talent than the others um, it's those that work really hard. So, in my opinion, it's about 1% talent and 99% hard work at whatever it is, being a magician or an acrobat or a great uh, vocalist or instrumentalist or something like that. Okay, so hard work and also direction, um, having the keys, and that's what we're talking about here and why I'm talking a lot here because this philosophy will definitely help you. So stick here, stick in with me here, and we're going to talk about some techniques. So you've heard me talk um, a few videos back, I talked about the guy in the circus who's um, riding a unicycle on a tightrope and he's juggling. So we see people that seem like they have just so much talent or you know, maybe like a Michael Jackson or a magician who's just absolutely incredible. Well, these people did not get like that overnight. They got that way through just sheer repetition and sheer practice and a lot of hard work. Okay, so that's what this that's what this basically comes down to. But there are some techniques that will get you there quicker. I feel that uh, that's the job of a teacher is to basically get you there quicker. The information is out there in the ethos and on the internet and in books and what have you. So it's not like I'm inventing anything here, but maybe just making it a little bit easier for you to understand some things. Um, and that's the job I feel as a teacher. Um, okay, so let's talk about some basic techniques here. When I'm learning to play um, a tune and learning to sing it, I break it down. So again, let's go back to that analogy of the guy on a unicycle who's juggling and on a tightrope wire. He didn't wake up and just start doing this one day. He was probably interested, probably saw another juggler and decided, hey, I'm going to juggle. Was really um, awkward at first and eventually got better and better at it until he was juggling all sorts of things and got really good at it. He probably had another thing that he was interested in like unicycling and got really super good at that. One day put the juggling and the unicycling together because the two were so easy separately. Um, learned how to walk a tightrope wire, went through all the troubles of falling and everything, said he sucked at it just like you're saying sometimes that uh, you suck on guitar, you don't. It's a learning curve, a learning process, and you're just at a different point in the continuum than, say, somebody else. There's always going to be people behind you, always going to be people better than you, no matter how good you are or how bad you think you suck. So um, with all that being said, as we get better at these different talents, we kind of bring them together and start doing them all together. That's why you can see somebody like Keith Urban working a crowd, playing a guitar solo, singing, doing all these things at the same time. Um, or a lot of other musicians that can do that as well, but that stuff doesn't just come overnight. Let's talk some specifics about um, how we might do this sort of thing. Um, okay, so for this example, I'm going to take the song um, Hallelujah. Uh, 
done by a lot of um, a lot of artists, but um, you've heard it before in the Shrek soundtrack. That sort of thing. That idea. Well, let's talk about how we can take a song like that and play and sing at the same time. Whenever I'm taking a tune like this, I will break it down to the block chords, meaning I'll just strum the chord, sing my phrase that I know that's over that chord until the next chord happens. I strum that chord and sing my next part. Okay? Your brain is much like a computer processor, except it learns and it can, in your subconscious mind, can aid in this where a, a processor can. It can only do so many things at once. So if, in the beginning you may not be able to think of several things at once. Whatever your conscious mind learns, your subconscious mind is sitting there watching and will learn this information and will eventually be able to do in the background while you're concentrating on one specific thing. Uh, an example of that might be if you're running with a friend and you're talking. Your subconscious is running for you while, you're sub while your conscious mind is sitting there talking with somebody. As a baby, a baby's using all their mental capacity to sit there and be able to walk. As we get good at this and we do it for thousands of hours, we get so good at it that our subconscious takes over. And then we can work on other conscious things like, walk, like talking and whatever, okay? That sort of thing. So think about that when you're doing this sort of thing. Don't give yourself too much that you can't handle it. So for instance, um, what I would do on this tune is I would strum the chord and I would go, um, let's see. Um, so, um, I heard there was a so I know that that's my first line. That's easy to do. I heard. So I know I'm going to strum on heard. I heard there was a Okay, so I get my phrase out there and C, that's, that's the syllable that I'm going to strum my chord on. You have to consciously say what you're going to do so that you know when to do it. So, I heard there was a secret chord. Easy enough, right? I heard there was a secret chord. And you'll want to repeat that over and over again to where that's comfortable. I heard there was a secret chord. Boom, you got that part, and then you keep adding. I heard there was a secret chord that David, so day, and I might even write it down um, like a chord progression. I might say, okay, the syllable day of David is going to hit the next chord, and I might write the chord over that. Um, makes it a lot easier. Uh, I heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it played. But you don't really care for music, do you? Okay, so breaking it down into those essentials, there's no chance in heck you are going to be able to do all this finger picking right off the bat if you're just new to this process. Okay, anybody who's doing this right off the bat has gone through these processes. Whether they know it or not, they've had to break it down. They, they may not remember it, but they had to. No matter who's done this, there's no one that just starts off doing this. Some people are better than others, but eventually time and practice levels the playing field. So remember that. Okay, um, I might have to break this up in two videos. I think I'm going to have to, but um, here we go. So, um, I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you really care for music, do you? Another really important thing is to slow these songs down. It gives you time to do the phrasing and all the rest, okay? So, to sum up here, you're going to take your lyrics, you're going to write them out, you're going to write the chord on top of the syllable, not just the word, but the syllable that you're going to be saying when you're striking that chord, okay? That's going to help a ton. Um, as far as finger picking and all that stuff, that's another story. We'll probably deal with that in the next video here. So, um, if you haven't already, 
Um, I'm going to have another video on this, so go to part two here when you're done. Um, but if you haven't already, go to yourguitarsage.com. I've got a great um, piece of information there, an electronic book, an ebook. Uh, it costs $10. It will help you a ton with this sort of thing. Um, check it out, yourguitarsage.com, and come back and check the second part of this video out. See ya.